it's an absolute privilege to be amongst you. The very fact that all of you are here shows that you are interested in global issues and you're interested in looking for solutions for global issues. So that makes it uh, one of the most fascinating audience that I have ever faced. Thank you very much. We will start um, with a human story. So uh, just briefly before we step in um, for today's presentation, um, Sage Sustainability as um, uh, they've mentioned is a sustainability and gender advisory firm. It's uh, primarily an all women team um, in execution, and we have a few good men in our advisory board. We, we are not biased against uh, men at all, while we're an all women team, but it's also a platform for women who've had breaks in their career, uh, we take them in with open arms and we see whatever their potential is, uh, it's uh, fulfilled uh, while they're working in sustainability. Yeah, so I'll begin. Is it a familiar picture? Yeah? So anybody would suggest what was the name of the oldest hominid? Hominin. What was the name of the lady? The fossil is somewhere in U.S. Museum, right? Lu what is it? Lucy. 2.5 million year old, yeah? So from Ethiopia, when they found this first fossil, uh, they said that, that even for Lucy, uh, the gait was straight, which means she's already standing up. Yeah? So from very early human history, if you see, uh, we are on all fours and we move to become erect. What were the other key features in human evolution that you can recall, which make us a very distinct and dominant species? Brain, yes, cranial capacity. Prehensile thumb, great. What else? What else? Bipedal, yes. Straight, yes. Yes, please. Anybody from the back? Sorry? Walk, that's right. What else? Binocular vision. Do you know? Yeah? So these four things, uh, first big leap in, in evolution is binocular vision, standing up straight, prehensile thumb and cranial capacity. From, from here, what led us to where we've come to? What was the pursuit that we are following that other animals don't follow? Anyone? What, what is the human pursuit? Knowledge, yes. What else? Money, okay, fulfillment of some sort, I would call it, yes. Louder. Okay, maybe we'll have to have a mic. Yeah, please, maybe you can stand up and speak, then others won't. Happiness, yes. What else? Sorry? Fame. Yeah, that's also a pursuit, yes. What else? Culture, yes. Yeah? What else? Knowledge, exploration, yeah? To belong, innovation, yes, absolutely. So this is not an exhaustive list. What we have, happiness and joy, knowledge, curiosity, exploration, belonging, love, kindness, autonomy, health and immortality, fulfillment of any sort. Uh, procreation, comfort, control. If you, if you think that this was the human pursuit, we developed these tools to achieve some of those. So when you see fire, what do you see? 
What were we looking for when we created fire? Light, warmth, yes. Yeah? Protection, yes, absolutely. Safety, yeah? So then you have wheels. So what were we wanting to do when we discovered a wheel? Transport, movement, quick, yeah? If we want, what we want to reach somewhere like this. So we said we didn't want to make an effort, we want to move. Uh, we created tools, agriculture, domestication of animals, all to achieve, again, pursue the human pursuit, which is we already outlined earlier. So how did we achieve that collectively? What, were, what are the key, um, there can be many others, but three significant things again that helped us achieve where we've reached. Money. Money. That we created much later. Language, who said language? Great, yeah. So yes, language, absolutely. Okay, then what else? Imagination. Imagination, yeah? We imagine things and that is, that is the biggest, the cognitive development is the biggest uh, signif significant factor. The third is what? Correct, it's collaboration. Because we had a language, we were imaginative and we could collaborate effectively is that we, why we've become a very dominant force, sometimes scarily so for other species on the planet. Can you see this map and uh, agree with it? What's wrong with it? Yeah, so it's not accurate. It's 1590 called Petrus's map, Orbis. And you can see Americas are not fully developed here. Australia is not visible to me. Japan is also not there. And the, by the way, the Antarctica was not really discovered. It was guesstimated at that point of time. And Arctic was considered a landmass, yeah? So all of that is not truth now. What we know at one point of time, this was the best map that we had in 1590. 400 years later, we have an update. Where are we now? We have full-scale industrialization, very ambient temperatures that we've created in the pursuit of comfort. We have vehicles for quick movement. Our disease burden is down for the pursuit of health. Uh, longevity has increased massively. And then air travel. We have moon mission, plans for Mars mission. At least one of us has it, Elon Musk, right? So poverty is reduced. Uh, wars are less, population is grown up, agricultural production has gone up. It's, it's a massive update 400 years later. While we have done that in a very naive manner, um, only to pursue what we said the human goals were, we have created some serious side effects on the planet and ourselves and our collective future, yeah? So, some of the global challenges that all of us, especially Generation Z, yeah? You're all Generation Z? Yeah. Y you would face, even the millennials would face our climate change, ocean acidification as a repercussion of that biodiversity crisis independently as well as because of as well because of the climate change ecosystem degradation constrained access to resources energy crisis food health infrastructure crisis governance crisis financial inequality social inequity erosion of trust uh, education crisis so do you think that there is um, an alternative viewpoint? If these are the challenges, what are the alternatives for us? Yeah? So our desired direction is all of these change to say we don't have these issues. That's where we want to go. Yeah? The compass is directing us towards a future 
that we have to go where climate issue is resolved, oceans are normal, biodiversity is thriving? Does it look like uh, realistic or unrealistic? Realistic? Really? So it sounds unrealistic. Um, fair access to resources sound unrealistic? OK. Governance, perfect governance sounds unrealistic? Unrealistic. OK. So it looks like a bleak future. Definitely, because we, we know that we're not acting in the right manner. If, if we have to go from global challenges to de desired direction, we ought to have a bridge. We, we, it's, the gulf is too wide. Why all of you said no? Because we really know that we don't see a clear path, clear road towards the other side. There are just three things that are required, perhaps, which can bridge this gap. One is the right knowledge, which is the global awareness of global issues. The second is the emotion for the whole world. Emotion for the whole world. And the third is the action. So it is your quintessential, typical think, feel, and act. However, the action has to be technolog technological. The action, because technology uh, is a force multiplier. We've seen that technology uh, scales up and can create uh, exponential changes. Yeah? So, lo so knowledge, emotion, and action. And that, uh, looking at it through a lens called sustainability. That essentially is sustainability when you put everything together. If you start finding solution for climate change, you may find a solution for climate change, but you will create problems in another bucket. Yeah? If you start finding problem for health crisis, you would have solutions for health crisis. We can all start having um, maybe mini meals which are fully nutritious, and then it allows us to have some junk, and then again to digest some junk, and perhaps we'll create perfect health. But would it sustain the planet? So thinking piecemeal is not sustainability. Thinking wholesome is sustainability, yeah? So when we see, when we often hear, take one idea and make it your life, have you, has, has anybody heard this phrase? Take that one idea and make it your life, yeah? Yes. Heard it? So when you do that, do that. But when you do that, make sure somebody else's, so you don't uh, create problems on somebody else's idea. Yeah, or your idea doesn't create problems for somebody else's idea, yeah? So nobody else should do the cleaning up of your idea. So we, we've all been very thankful to Wright Brothers uh, in the early 20th century for giving us the first free flight. And we all um, are thankful that we are using that. But uh, we naively have created a lot of other issues for the planet, uh, continuing to use that medium. I will now, with that backdrop, we just take you through some of the consulting work that we do, some of the type of consulting work that we do. And what we've learned as global problems, we will try and see it through the eyes of one life cycle of a, of a pair of genes. I was thinking, what is that one product that all of you may have used in your life? So everybody has a pair of blue genes. Can I see a show of hands? Yes. So we can all relate with this product. Um, this life cycle is done by Levi's. So first is cotton production. So do you think the earlier problems that we talked about, any of that has a ram ramification? Um, so cotton production has a ramification on any of those global issues? Yes? So what are those uh, when we grow uh, cotton, so first land use, yeah? 
Um, then you have pesticides on the cotton. Cotton is a very pest intensive, uh, pest prone crop. So there's very, uh, it's pesticide intensive crop as well and very water, um, it, it uses a lot of water as well. Then we move on to fabric. Again, uh, fabric, uh, when the fabric is made and it's dyed, uh, that creates a lot of problem for the waste. Uh, waste water in the streams. It's a very dirty process, actually. When the garment is manufactured, again, the, it's a very dirty process. Then the garment is distributed. Consumer takes care of the garment by washing it. It matters whether you're washing it after five wears or two wears or 10 wears, and whether you're using uh, what um, degrees on your washing machine you're using. If, if you're using 60, 70 degrees, you are creating uh, more carbon. Uh, and then finally, recycling or end of the life use. So the Garment industry side effects, as you can see, has direct bearing on um, cotton production has on climate change, oceans, biodiversity, land use, inequity, the farmer, uh, farmers, and the laborers. Fabric, again, you have, say, eutrophication as well. In garment manufacturing, typically air quality can be poor in certain garment uh, industries, energy intensive, water intensive, and a lot of wastewater is generated. Distribution, a lot of embedded energy again because of the lorries that take the, also packaging. Customer care, you have machine wash that I've already discussed. Recycling, again, recycle. when we say recycling, it again consumes some uh, power and water and then air quality issues. End of the life, you have landfills. So overall, it's a very sad uh, picture. So let's look at the uh, life cycle uh, analysis here. So in, um, you have, for one pair of jeans, 69, uh, equivalent to 69 miles driven by an average car. 33.4 kg CO2 equivalent you uh, produce when you wear a pair of blue jeans, yeah? That's just one thing that uh, we're using. Water consumed is 3,781 liters. Did you, did you guess that it would be so much water? W what was the estimate that uh, how much carbon uh, can it emit, carbon dioxide can it emit a pair of blue jeans? Were you close to it in your mind? No? Eutrophication, 48.9 gram, and land occupation, 12 square meter per year. So <clears throat> it's, it's not that uh, the process is not being rethought. Step by step, there is an improvement in the process. So typically, you have to know where the industry is, what are they doing right now, where each process can be uh, improved for lesser carbon, less energy, lesser water, more wastewater recycling. So even the consumer awareness is important. So stack emission monitoring, co-generation plans, ESP system for boilers, uh, and a lot of other uh, measures. Better Cotton Initiative, again, is, is what promotes um, uh, more organic cotton. Uh, zero discharge ETP effluent treatment plants and wastewater guidelines, uh, following uh, guidelines. Then you have steps to reduce caustic soda, reduce salt uh, in, the, in the process. So while I, I mentioned it to you in a very uh, light manner in the previous uh, um, sl uh, slide, mostly when we do our work, we engage with all the stakeholders in the industry uh, that, that means this, your top teams, your functional heads, your workers, your laborers, uh, even your customers, 
and your supply chain. And we arrive at where is it that the industry is Im impacting, which is called materiality. I don't want to use much of the jargon here, but typically this is how uh, we prioritize. What is highest priority? This is not for the uh, blue jeans, but for leather. Uh, so energy, uh, economic performance. So this is what the stakeholders say are very, very important. So based on that, the direction, the company takes the direction. This is how consulting happens. And similarly, we match it with the SDGs and see in which, for each SDG what direction uh, is the company taking. Having said that, what, uh, whatever solutions we are giving to the best of our abilities are still incremental. This is probably not the way to go in the future. We have to rethink each industry. Maybe we have to rethink clothing. Rethink clothing completely uh, with fresh perspective, fresh minds. We are too stale, perhaps, to think uh, clothing can be in a, in a different manner. But probably for the younger generations, that's the right, th those are the right questions you have to go with while pro solving problems. We'll take one more industry, which is education. And while we don't have um, any uh, consulting assignment with a, a school or a college, um, we just briefly have a look at it with you. So what do you think are the side effects of education for the same chart? Do you think you imp yeah? Depression. Depression. I will add to that list. Can, can you tell me why do you say that? Okay, so what's your solution to that? Right, yeah, that's a very good suggestion. Are teachers listening? And I hope the message, yeah? Are the teachers here? Yeah, I think the study, studies should be far more fun. I agree with you. you. But you know what? You have to know you are much better than us. Ask your teachers. You have to ask your teachers, how were their student days? Yes, ma'am. We are getting better. You have much more... Uh, you know, you have this conference for, for that matter. You, you, is that exciting or not? Ma'am, uh, it is exciting, but then what I'm trying to say is, um, well, I'm in CBSC and um, everything revolves around exams, or at least in my school. So in the exams, they're never going to ask, how does the UN function? They're not going to ask in the maths exam, how does the UN function? I mean, I do like coming to MUNs, but then education-wise, I do not believe that it will, it will come in your examinations. <laughs> That's a very interesting and I think very real observation that you have, very authentic observation. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. I would add it in the list of the global issues. We actually have written education crisis. Did you notice? Um, no, ma'am. Education crisis in the end. Yeah. So we know that probably uh, we are all at loss. Loss. Somebody is raising hand. Yes, please. OK. Uh. This is going to be a bomb. What if I told you the education crisis is the reason for all the other crises? Sorry? Ma'am, the education crisis is the reason all the other crises still continue. I, I think let's, let's really give him a big hand. Very good. I really appreciate that, yes. That's the key, that's perhaps the key uh, crisis that we have, that we continue to evolve into a world that none of us is happy with. Is that right? <laughs> yeah. Yes, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Better education for all, ma'am. 
How many of you agree with me, students? Better Asian world. Yeah, okay, fine. I know you agree with me. Yes. Thank you. Appreciate that. Yes. So we have indoor facilities in your schools, and that we have. Um, so we, as we haven't really dealt with any uh, particular school, but it can be different based on whether they are green or non-green. The power of the AC source, like the source power, uh, building pass, building is passive solar or not. Awareness on energy is there or not. Uh, then on transport, it can again vary with whether you're coming by your private transport or you coming in school bus, which is diesel or gasoline or CNG uh, or maybe uh, electric. I, I'm not aware. So perhaps mostly diesel. So uh, then you have meals, waste, water, energy, air again, uh, which has a negative impact. Um, so stationary and electronics, so recycled, uh, if you're using, you'll have less impact, lower energy. Uh, you have high energy star equipments being used, so you have lower uh, energy footprint. Outdoor facilities, your lawns, watering, cleaning equipment, and events such as these events, annual days, sports days, and shows. All of these can do you think something can be done about all of these? Yes or no? Yes. Great. St right now, I'm not sure about it, but yes. So we just run you through one small uh, component of that. I'm just going to display some of the food, uh, um, uh, the, the, the meals that you have. And can you see uh, clearly what is at the bottom was bacon, cheeseburger? I can't read it. Um, and what's the carbon footprint of that dish? Is it 7.5 kg? Yeah, 7.5 kg carbon. And if you see a vegan Buddha bowl, which sounds maybe uninteresting to you, can you see the carbon footprint? What is the difference? OK, I have some more dishes to offer. Next is peanut, but peanut butter and banana sandwich. So you have 0.36 kg per meal uh, carbon footprint for that. Then you have salmon fillet. Uh, again, it's less than the bacon burger. Uh, yeah. And then you have vegetarian omelette, whatever that means. Um, that has 2.69 kg as the carbon. So, so what I'm trying to say is I'm not suggesting what you eat, what you eat more. But can we be aware that what consumes the most can be the least popular dish that we eat? Is it too difficult to make a promise like that? Yes or no? If it's yes, tell me. We want to know. I also want to learn from you. Is it impossible to make a promise to yourself? No, that's good. So have a look at, uh, so be aware of what you are eating. Not only for your health, but also for planet's health. So what we typically do for, uh, e what we intend to do, if I may say, for schools, but we've already done it for o other organizations, this is for a non-government organization, is that we give a green audit scorecard to the organization on waste, water, biodiversity, emissions, and energy. This is an organization in Bangalore that we've consulted with. And uh, this is their, uh, you know, sustainability dashboard, uh, what water they consume, how much do they harvest, uh, rainwater harvest, their biodiversity index inside Simpson index, uh, how much waste they produce. On its own, these numbers may look silly. In, in, what it means is that uh, it doesn't have a meaning what they do, but for them, for, for uh, the non-government organization that we consulted with, it has a meaning because this is their first metric and they are working on policies 
and systems to improve their sustainable uh, their sustainability footprint on each of those like i've showed in the previous slide uh, based on uh, a, a certain uh, tool um, uh, based on a tool that they we've given to them they can now map themselves year after year whether they've gone up on the score or they have fallen down so their waste and their um, water footprint is not as good as their biodiversity emissions and energy so this organization is doing really well in biodiversity but they are not so good in waste uh, which, which sounds counterintuitive that an organization which is so good in energy would not focus on waste but that's how it was and that's why the metrics are important sometimes so sustainability action map uh, we again consult with the uh, the teachers uh, in the sense in school it will be teachers and students uh, and then collectively we arrive at what can be done in this week what can be done in the uh, following month and for the entire year we follow up on a plan and we give deep responsibilities for everyone i don't want anyone to leave in a in a on a negative uh, note so if whether sustainability is possible and closed loops closed loop economies are possible uh, i would like to take you through a, a, a circular economy a case study that i was involved with last in last decade actually um, about 10 years ago so in solomon islands in um, uh, near fiji uh, there are there are these uh, groups um, uh, villages in the islands who who didn't have uh, much livelihood uh, much sources of livelihood if i may say so the only thing that they have at their homes is a coconut tree yeah or maybe many coconut trees so so some uh, body came um, uh, as a local organization and they set up a village level dme unit i would want you to see this very carefully uh, in the village there is a collective of say four to five families and they first de husk together they de husk the coconut and the de husked coconut is used as the as a the husk is used as a waste for as a fuel for heating the coconut and then you have um, it it is split and grated and for that you need generator and that oil comes from again one of the by by processes of this entire um, entire coconut expulsion process so then oil is expelled and then filtering happens so whatever uh, oil is of high grade that goes and is shipped outside as pure a grade coconut virgin coconut oil and what is expelled is it goes back to the generator and whatever solid is left uh, it goes to the filt uh, as a filtrate as a local um, in the local market for running your uh, cars your vehicles etc uh, what i missed out was uh, yeah so the 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 meat that is left which is not used is given as chicken and pig feed yeah to the to again so there's not an not a gram of waste happening in this entire process from the oil to the waste um the rest of the waste is used as a by product in soap candle making and also as uh, oil for lighting not even a gram of waste comes out and there are multiple products each each uh, waste is taken as a resource for another an, another uh, process so perfect examples are possible it's only again the power of i won't say power it's the courage of one to view in this manner and then uh, have the courage to go and approach others to to get support from them yeah we also doing uh, courses on online courses on climate change mitigation and disaster risk reduction 
for uh, college students uh, so that they can take up disaster as a uh, possible employment if they are interested in that. Uh, Indian government would have lots of jobs in disaster risk reduction. It is, uh, it is getting serious traction and with the kind of extreme weather events we have, uh, there are going to be district level and village level people dedicated to do these jobs. Okay, um, I would say that the world works as a collective and that's why you're all here together. That's why the UN is there. And I think that as a collective only, you'll be able to solve the world, the global problems. However, if you think you can work on your own, then there's a lazy person's guide to saving the world also. So do act in whichever manner you want to. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am. I request you to remain on stage as there are sure, two or three yeah. questions that sure. the students have asked you. Yeah. Can I ask Vishal Karamchandi to please stand up? Yeah. He has a question for you. Yes, please. He says he's a future entrepreneur and he's going to start a QSR chain internationally. And he needs some advice for sustainable ideas for his firm, BFM Private Limited. So, uh, what, what, what does that mean, BFM? Burger, fries and more. Burger, fries and more. Yeah. So, you you wanting to start uh, a firm on burger, fries and more. Yeah, basically fro uh, potato based uh, quick service uh, items. So, uh, if you're wanting to do that, do you know that there is a lot of simulation happening? I hear there is already uh, a lot of traction on uh, businesses uh, doing simulating the same taste but something made from uh, the components the ingredients which are not as carbon intensive and also not that bad for health yeah mm -hmm. so do you do you think that's a sustainable idea yeah that's also a sustainable idea so so there are uh, i'm forgetting the name but i'll be able to tell you that yeah, I want you to then read, read up on them. I hear there are about f 35 PhDs who are working on creating those tastes. Uh, it's a firm based out of uh, maybe Boston in US. And uh, th they've got a lot of venture funding actually uh, behind them. Maybe the CEO of Sun Microsystems is also supporting them. You have to keep a watch on that space. Yeah. Thanks a lot, ma'am. You're ma welcome. The second question for you is, how do you think the human body and physique would further evolve in order to adapt to the changing world? You know, on, I'm not really, actually I'm a paleontologist. So <laughs> my first degree is paleontology. So <laughs> it's, it's a very appropriate question in that regard. But you know what, I don't think I'm competent to answer that uh, with the, and I think I'll be lying if I say I know it. But on the lighter side, they say that we'd probably become, we'll go back to our force, the way we are just, um, you know, trying to sit and not move, uh, and we, we, we're not that agile anymore. So definitely that could have an impact. But I'm sure on our prehensile uh, thing, we are, we, we, may, we may still need to use some tools other than use the, you know, this uh, touch screens uh, where we use a lot of thumb as well to hold. I think that's something so unique to humans that even if for the play we must use a hammer and break something, we should do that. Uh, because I don't know what we lose if we lose that, yeah? So I'm sorry I can't answer that one with certainty. Thank you, ma'am, for your inspiring and very motivational speech. Thank you very much. I request the Director pleasure. General Sai Bandi to present a token of appreciation to Dr. Shashi Kad on behalf of all of us.